In this video, we are going to discuss about the different types of primary memory. As you know, primary memory is very expensive. So, technologies have been developed so that we can have different types of memory which can be optimized. This is the broad type of primary memory. As you can see here, random access memory which is the RAM, the read only memory that is the ROM. RAM is again of two types, DRAM which is the dynamic RAM and SRAM which is the static RAM. Read only memory, ROM is again of two types, PROM and EPROM. PROM is programmable ROM and EPROM is erasable programmable ROM which is again of two types EEPROM and UVEPROM. We will look at these in detail just now. RAM as I told you earlier it stands for random access memory. It is the processor accesses all memory addresses directly for a RAM. It is available in very small quantities. Why? Because it is very expensive. But still that quantity is up to 1 gigabit or 2 gigabit. It is volatile but it may be of these two types DRAM and SRAM, DRAM and SRAM. What is DRAM? DRAM is each memory cell is made of one transistor and one capacitor. What does that mean? That means that the cell starts losing its charge the moment the data is, is stored there. So, we have to keep passing the charge and refreshing the memory. We have to keep refreshing it so that the data value is stored there till it is deleted. So, it needs to be refreshed 1000 times per second. However, it can have large number of cells. So, primary memory of most of the PCs is made of DRAM, dynamic RAM because we can have large amount of DRAM. What happens in static RAM? Static RAM, each cell is made of just one flip-flop where you store a bit 0 or 1 and it will remain there. It does not need to be refreshed. However, that means that it is used only in specialized applications. It is more expensive than the dynamic RAM. Now let's see what is ROM, the read-only memory. It can be read only by the processor. Data to be stored is written during the manufacturing phase only. The manufacturers who are manufacturing the ROM will put whatever data, whatever instructions, whatever programs are to be put in while manufacturing. Once it is installed in any system, it is put on any processor, the system cannot write anything on it, make any changes. So, it contains data that does not need to be altered. For example, logarithmic tables. The logarithmic tables will always remain the same. So, they can be put into the ROM if the system needs to access it again and again. Slower and hence cheaper than RAM. ROM is slower and hence cheaper than RAM. However, with time, a need was felt to make some changes in the ROM. So, technologies are now available so that we can program these ROMs. The first is PROM, programmable ROM. It can be programmed using a special hardware device called the PROM burner. Using the PROM burner, you can edit it, you can add a new program to it. Erasable programmable ROM. The PROM, whatever is written, you can add to it. You cannot erase anything. In the case of erasable PROM, you can erase what is existing and write something new. This erasing can be done by electrical signals or UV signals. So, there are two types of EPROMs, E, EPROMs and UV EPROM. Now, let us look at the most special type of memory which is the cache memory. It is a small piece of high speed volatile memory available to the processor for fast processing. When the processor needs to do very fast processing and it has run out of RAM, then the cache memory is made available to it. It may be a reserved portion of the main memory, another chip on the CPU or an independent high speed storage device. This is used only in special cases where very high speeds are required. It is made of 
fast speed static ramps because the static ramps are being used they don't need to be refreshed so the data can be accessed quickly process of keeping some data and instructions in cache memory for faster access is called caching so if you are keeping some data or the instructions in cache memory that is called caching whenever the processor needs any piece of data or instruction it will check the first cache once it checks the cache memory and it is not available then it will go to the ram other part of the ram and check whether it is available finding data or instruction in the cache memory is called a cache hit in this video we have seen the different types of primary memory in the next video we are going to study about the secondary memory